We've already taken a look at line-based positioning of grid items. However, we've got an alternate method of placing items on a grid. In this method, you create named areas and then use those to position your items. So let's take a look at that. I've got my markup here. So this is a fairly simple structure. We've got a div here with a class of grid. That's the parent. And inside, we've got a header, an article, and a side, and a footer. And we're going to lay these out at the moment. Because we've defined some grids, we've got um, display grid here outside of the media queries. And then we're saying a two column grid inside. And so grid is just laying the items out one into each cell of that grid. So let's take control of that this time using these named areas. So first we need to name the areas. Here's my header. And we use the grid area property to do this. And we just give them a name. That's up to you what that name is. It's just an ident something that can identify the area. And we've got the footer. And our article. I'm going to call that main. And the aside. And let's call that sidebar. As I say, these are totally up to you what you decide to call these. So then we go down to the mobile layouts. This is here where we've said display grid. We haven't set up any columns or rows. We're essentially going to have a single column track grid. And we use the grid template areas property here. And as the value of that, we're going to actually describe what our layout looks like. So I'm going to start with a header. And I'm going to say main. And then let's have our sidebar and the footer. As you can see, they're all now stacked up in that first column uh, because this is the only positioning we've done. So let's go to our wider layout and you start to see this really take shape here. So again, grid template areas and then for the value we'll say we want the header to stretch right across the top of the layout and then we're going to have the sidebar and next to it that main area and then below we've got the footer and you can see now how that layout has taken shape and we've really described it in this sort of ASCII art manner as the value of grid template areas you can sort of tidy this up if you want to by adding some extra spaces so these things all line up as you can see if you repeat the name that causes it to span across the tracks. Um, you've got to have a rectangular shaped area. You can't make any funny shaped areas or disconnected areas in this version of the spec. Something else that's quite interesting is if you want to skip a cell, then if you just use a dot period character, you can see that goes away. And again, if you want to line up that ASCII art, you can add multiple dots with no white space in between them. And that works in the same way. I think this is a really nice way to work. It's very easy to play around with your layout. As you can see there, by repeating the sidebar, that causes the sidebar to come all the way down next to the footer. I've actually been using this method to do some prototyping, although I obviously haven't been able to use it in production yet because it's not out from behind a flag. I've been able to use this method for prototyping layouts uh, because it's very, very easy just to move things around and play around with your layout and work out where you want things to be. So give this a try. It's a very straightforward way of working and I think you'll really like it.